All right. Hello, everyone. Uh, this is Gwen Song or Parish. You can call me either one. And uh, we're going to do something a little different today. Um, I had a coworker who wanted to see a tutorial for her son. I'm not going to name them just because I don't know if that's something they would prefer. Probably not. So we're going to leave their names out. But uh, what was requested was a tiger. Now, I'm going to be straightforward. Not great with realistic things, but I figured this is a learning experience for everyone. So I'm going to give it a shot. And uh, maybe maybe we can all learn from this, especially myself. I'm always willing to learn. Um, I know there were some people who were asking what materials I use, what drawing program and everything. So I'm going to go over that really quick. And then we'll get to the sketching in just a minute. So if you can see over in this corner here, that is the program I use. It is Coral Painter 12, and I can go into the backstory in that for in a bit. But I want to get everything gone through here. Um, so Coral Painter 12 is the program I use. It's a little pricey, but uh, it works efficiently. I've been using it for years. Uh, I also use a tablet for this. So I can actually draw. Some people use a mouse. I found that that's incredibly difficult, so I use a tablet. It's a Wacom brand. I believe it's Intuo 6 Pro. I lost track after a while. But uh, those are the materials I use. So if, if anybody uses this as a tutorial for themselves, uh, works fine with pencil, uh, markers. I'm going to try something different with this as well. Usually I do several layers for my artwork. Um, all of my cartoon drawings. Um, I'm going to do something different. I'm going to do a few different layers for the sketches. Make sure I get all the details of this guy's fur here. But uh, once I get to coloring him, I'm going to do it on one layer. That's going to be a little bit difficult for me because I don't usually do that. But I feel like it might be a little bit easier than what I usually do. Make it look a little nicer, especially since we're doing something more, more realistic. Um, and I figure this is my first time doing this. I don't know how people are going to like this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to record my drawing process for about an hour. I'll have a timer set. And uh, we'll go from there. I'm going to do a few of these until this guy has been fully drawn out. Hopefully it looks nice. If it doesn't, well, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, but yeah, so general general guy here. I'm going to go for an hour, different sessions on my days off. Um, time and date is down here at time of recording. Um, other than that, I guess we can go ahead and get started. I'm going to go ahead and put my timer here. Now, sketching in general, I know, oops, that is the wrong color, too dark. When some people sketch, they prefer to use like a blue. I don't. I prefer a gray and then I can darken it if I need to go into more detail. This is the color wheel, by the way, if anybody needs that info. But uh, I also have a kind of a script, but not really. Um, I'm not great with speaking. And I had this whole thing in my head while I was trying to sleep last night. And now, of course, now that I'm awake, I don't remember any of it. So, yeah, we're going to see how this goes. Sorry for my terrible, terrible voice. I'm going to try really hard not to sound like an idiot. I will anyway, but it's fine. Sometimes it's okay to sound like an idiot. So as you can see here, I am sketching out the general shapes and facial placement. It's important to draw shapes first so you can understand... I made this canvas way too big. Um, so you can understand where muscles and bones go. You don't have, technically have to take an anatomy class for this kind of thing. It's a, probably a good idea um, if you're studying animals and behavior, um, just so you know how they move and... Fluidity is important 
in drawings just so, to make it look, look more realistic, at least for uh, this type of drawing. You want to make sure that you're capturing the actual life of the animal. And now I'm saying all of this, uh, trying to sound like a professional, but there's technically no correct way to draw. I want to state that right off the bat, just because I know when I was younger, I was always trying to find the right way to draw correctly and efficiently. And I found that there's many different processes. There's no like specific correct way to draw anything. Um, it's typically just a lot of practice of what you love, a lot of practice um, in general. It's important to, oh, I need to make it space a little bigger. The good thing about this that's different from pencil and a uh, marker is that instead of erasing everything, if you just need to size something up, just use this here. And it fixes the uh, sizing issue. Now I think I made his head too big, but we're going to leave it for now just to continue the process. And like I said, this is just my way of drawing. I know a lot of different people. You can look up other tutorials as well. I'm subscribed to a few people. Um, and this is another cool thing you can do. Adjust the canvas. Probably need to rotate this guy a little bit too. Um, let's see here. Oh, I am on the canvas for some reason. Let's fix that. Okay. And I apologize in advance, I do tend to lose my train of thought a lot. So I will probably have a tendency to start a conversation or start a topic and then immediately forget what I was talking about while I'm saying it sometimes too. So I apologize for that. Um, let's see. So those are the general shapes. Luckily, uh, if you don't like drawing like spe like straight lines or uh, specific shapes, most things, I'm doing a little example of this here, most things can be done in cylinders, or at least that's what I've found. Um, if you like doing rougher sketches, you can use uh, squares like I'm going to do here to help block in uh, specific shapes to make it easier to put in like the placement of everything. like. Especially for right here, if I use a square here, it'll help me round out the leg. So it looks a little more like a leg and not just some clump. Alright, so that's sketch one. I'm going to change the layer to default. When you, I use the mechanical pencil tool for sketches, that's something I've been doing a lot recently. I found it's a little easier. Uh, it automatically goes to gel. I don't really know what that means, to be completely honest. Um, but when I'm done with the sketch, I set it to default so it becomes lighter. And then when I go to put in more details, I'll do another layer and start sketching it. And as you can see, it changed to gel as soon as I place the uh, pen over here. Sometimes it's still a little too dark. I'll just change the opacity here, make it a little lighter. Then we can go back in and uh, add more details. Um, and another thing I wanted to cover really quick. Um, besides, you know, practicing what you love and, you know, just the process here is that, um, it's okay to use references. Um, tracing is not a great idea. Um, when you're young, it's okay, because it's like, it's practice. As long as you're not claiming it as your own. That didn't sound like a word. Claiming it as your own. Um, a, I, a lot of artists online get a lot of flack for uh, tracing, and you know what? That's understandable, but when you're younger and you're trying to practice something and you're not posting it as something that you drew entirely on your own, um, it's okay. Like, as long as you're not claiming it's your own and you say, hey, I used a reference, I traced a little bit here and there to practice the form, from now on I'm not going to use that. Um, 
I even had some art classes where part of the process was kind of tracing, but then we would have to copy it onto another piece of paper um, by sight. Didn't really make sense to me. We'd use a grid format, um, but it, it worked out for some people there. Didn't work out for me, but everybody works differently, especially in art. I mean, if you look at other artists, there's a different process for everything. They go through like multiple, I think a lot of artists actually go through multiple canvases and then redo a lot of their uh, artwork before they have a final piece. And that's another thing that's interesting about art, especially when, you're, when you've worked on something for so long. There's a point where you'll, where you, wow, there we go. There's the fumble. That's one. If I had a way to edit this properly, I'd add a counter to the side, maybe up here or something. How many flubs? How many flubs did I have this session? Um, where was I? See, there's an example of me being in the middle of a sentence and not remembering what I was originally talking about. But hopefully I will remember and we'll get back to the topic. But it's okay to use references. There's no shame in it. I use references for most of my drawings, if not, uh, like 90% of them, I use a reference for. And every speed paint that I've done up to this point has been, I've, I mean, it's in the video, um, has been with a reference on the side. I am doing it a little bit differently today because, again, I have no way to edit this. Um... So I've got the reference here that I saved from a Google search. I don't really want to open any other tabs just because I have um, a lot of stuff open for other projects and I don't want to reveal those just yet. But uh, in the future, if I get a decent editing program, I think Final Cut Pro is one of the ones that I wanted to get. Uh, that's pretty expensive as well. But, uh, yeah, here I am. I'm already getting him to look a little more cartoonish. But in the coloring process, hopefully, I can make him look a little more realistic. But, uh, anyway, back to Final Cut. I actually remembered what I was talking about. Um, it's an editing program I used back in high school. And it works pretty well, but it's really expensive. Um, I might save up my money a little bit more from work to uh, get said program. Because right now my abilities for videos like this are a lim little bit limited. And you know what? It shows progress from what you could do before and what you can do now. Yeah, I'm having some difficulties with his muzzle. That's not the right word, probably. But let's see if I can fix this. Again, with pencil, this is a little bit more tricky. You actually have to erase and be careful how hard you press. I am lucky enough to use a computer where I don't have to as often. So I apologize if that takes away, oops, there we go. If that takes away, what am I doing here? So upside, don't have to erase. Downside, sometimes that kind of thing happens and you have to troubleshoot what just happened. So what happened there? I was on the eraser and when I flipped back over to the mechanical pencil, it kept the size of the eraser. I didn't mean to switch to eraser, but it happens. And uh, then the pencil was too big and I couldn't, and it made the, the lines too big. It's always a good thing to uh, figure out where your limits are too and use those, I don't want to say disadvantages, um, that's kind of what they are, but you can use them to your advantage because you know how you draw and like for this process here, like clearly this still looks kind of cartoonish and the anatomy is not 100% correct, but I know that that's a problem for me and I'll be able to fix that to some degree at least, I hope. Um, in the finished product, because right now this just looks like, well, 
It doesn't look like a tiger. He needs to be a little fluffier. And I don't think I can get the fluffiness. Like, I could do as many lines over here as I want. Um, that's not going to fix the fluffiness of this uh, majestic animal. But that's why there's many processes, many sketches, many ways to sketch. If I had a way to record this, like, in pencil, I might get some different, maybe even better results. I feel like realistic drawings are harder on digital platforms. That's just me, though. I know a lot of people who are fantastic at this kind of thing. Um, just digital in general. I don't have any problem whatsoever drawing realistically. But I think it's because I have, that's, I'm going to get to that at some point over here part of my little list. Um, you do kind of want to broaden your horizons because it'll help you with the main focus that you're trying to do. So if you want to draw realistic animals, sometimes it's okay to take classes on cartoons because the cartoons will help you figure out how to warp the lines a bit to make things look different but still realistic. I don't know the best way to explain this to be perfectly honest. Um, but I used to take a lot of classes before I started working at my current job, the only job I've ever had, to be fair. Um, you know, besides uh, babysitting and... Uh, sorry, my voice is getting a little gravelly. I'm going to take some... Take a sip of water here. Excuse me. I'm not used to talking this much, to be perfectly honest. Um, anyway, I used to take a lot of art classes when I was younger, back in high school and uh, a little bit in college. And uh, I was told by a, a lot of times by both my teachers, instructors, and uh, my father as well, it's important to have like a larger array of knowledge in artwork in general, just because anything you learn in art um, whether it's the type of art you want to draw or not, helps you along the way with other types of art. So, for instance, in, let's see, it's a good example. I've got a few. I'm just trying to figure out which one to tell first to make the most sense. Um, I guess we can start chronologically. When I was in high school, I took a general art class in my freshman, my freshman year. And uh, one of the projects that we had in that class was a architect, uh, what are the words for this? It's been so long, like five years almost, say almost. Um, you know, basically we had to draw a, a house and we had to pick one from a selection. And, you know, I mean, he taught us how to do it prior um, it's all about perspective, and I'm not doing that a lot here, to be perfectly honest, but when you're doing landscapes, there's this whole thing, so like, I've got this guy standing on a rock, but I probably won't even draw the rock in the final, in the final thing, to be honest. But, uh, when you're drawing landscapes and, you know, backgrounds and stuff like that, if you're drawing a building, there's... A line that you start with and different vanishing points depending on what type of uh, drawing you're trying to do, what kind of perspective you're looking for. Um, I'm not going to go into much detail about that today just because I'm not an expert on that kind of thing. I wouldn't be able to explain it very well or do it justice. But um, in that class, it was very interesting. It was really cool. And, uh, I had never drawn a house to that degree before. Like, you know, as a kid, you just kind of doodle off to the side, and you're like, oh, this is cool. Um, and by a kid, I mean, like, five. You just kind of draw from where you could. I don't know if you heard that. I just got a Snapchat from a coworker. We're gonna ignore that for now. Um, where am I? We're gonna start putting in some details here. 
trying to figure out, let's see, should we start with light colors or should I start with the orange? Orange might be the best idea. We're going to go with that. So another cool thing you can do with this, you can kind of take this little dropper and you can take it and kind of slide it across here and see the differences in color. I'm going to zoom in a little bit just so you can see a little bit, a little bit better. So just on his face, we're going to start light. And look at how much it changes as you go across. Yeah. That's a lot of colors and just the nose here. We're not going to do a lot of that today. Um, right now, I think just basic colors are going to work. And we can always go back and change them later because that's how nice this program is. It lets you change colors through either correction or adjust adjusting or even like lighting and surface texture not so much but i i use that a lot but lighting can be changed quite a bit okay so i should do some sort of outline here but i don't know how well that's going to work with coloring this so we're not going to do that we're just going to jump right in and uh see how that goes um but where was I? Oh, the architecture drawing. I had never drawn a house like that before, but with teachings like that, not only does it help you draw houses in the future, um, if that's something you're interested in, at least, or if, like, like myself, you're drawing comics and interiors and exteriors are a big thing, like backgrounds and stuff like that, it's very helpful to practice that sort of thing, even if it's not something you like. Um, it's important to, and I feel like I'm repeating myself over and over, it's very important to practice a lot of different styles and a lot of different types of art. It's hard to explain, really. I don't explain things very well at all, to be perfectly fair. But, uh, this, it helps you in the long run with your artwork in general, because it helps, whether it's something you'd like to draw, it'll help with lighting and shapes and a lot of other things that you might not have learned drawing your normal way. Um, and like I said before, I, I took a lot of classes, not because I thought my artwork was terrible, but I just wanted to improve it uh, in the long run. And that is okay if you don't have the confidence right away. If it's something you love, whether you have the confidence or not, you just need to keep doing it. Um, yeah, I, uh, I don't want to get into anything heavy right now, so we're going to change topics a little bit. Um, we're going to... I'm going to teach you a little thing. I don't know if it's really that much of a big deal to teach, but I know there are a lot of artists who don't have confidence in their, uh, oops, there we go, went to mechanical pencil again, even though it's not what I was on. I'm going to change that. But, um, where was I? I'm going to teach you a decent way to boost your confidence with your art. It's a little bit of a longer process, unless you've already got some uh, pieces of artwork that you like at the moment. So let's say you're a little down and you think, oh, my artwork isn't that good. It's not going to get far. You're comparing yourself to all these other artists. It's kind of a deconstructive way to look at art. In my opinion, I found that if you look at some of your old art, and you compare it to what you can do now, it's a much better way to show progress. And that's really what's important when you're an artist is progress. It's not about being perfect because there is no perfection. And to tell you the truth, something like this, um, when you're drawing stuff like this, I mean, this is just a photo. I say just a photo. This is a photo, but to get something like of this caliber, um, some people, or work months or years on one project. And one it, projects technically are never done. 
they are quote unquote finished when the artist says, I'm done putting work into this. For the most part, that's typically the mindset of artists. And that is okay. And you can always go back and improve something on the artwork too. Or the way I like to do it, I redraw it completely, which again takes a while. But uh, let's see if I can fix this, because right now I've got the anatomy off a little bit again. Because I can see just by using this reference here of just his uh, face here, um, this needs to be farther out. I've got this not quite where it needs to be. Um, but again, everything is a learning experience in my head. I know I don't know if I sound like Bob Ross right now or not. I'm trying to stay positive and, um, you know, because I, I never watched any of his tutorials, and I probably should, but uh, he seemed like a cool, a cool dude. You know, just painting, trying to keep everyone positive, and that's kind of important. Positivity nowadays doesn't seem to be at the forefront anymore. I know when I was a kid, everybody would try to stay positive and be happy about anything and everything. And I don't know if that was the best way to go about it either, but I remember everybody trying to stay positive. And in most things, when I look around nowadays, it's not really that way anymore. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it's just where I live or, you know, the people I'm around. I haven't quite figured that out yet, but positivity, especially in your artwork, is important. Again, there's always something you can improve. There's no stopping um, in progress. It's an important part of life. Um, it's important in everything you do, really. But, uh, that might actually be my favorite thing about art in general, is that there's always, always progress. There's always a way to move forward, even if you're a little down. Um, there's always something you can do to not necessarily control the situation, because clearly I've still got some issues here and there on this, but there are things you can do to manipulate the drawing to make it look more like what you want it to look like. And that is... I don't even know where I'm going with this anymore. Sometimes I have a tendency to uh, just say what's on my mind and not think about what I'm actually saying. And hopefully all of that made sense to some degree. Because in my head it made no sense, except for, you know, staying positive and comparing yourself to your own artwork and not everybody else's. Oops, I'm on the wrong pencil again. But, uh... But, I mean, this kind of thing... A lot of people think that artwork can't get you anywhere, but there are so many ways to put yourself out there, um, especially if you want to use art as a career. You can use different websites, posts online of your artwork. Um, and sometimes that can get a little rough too. I'm not going to lie. Um, you're always going to have, if you post your artwork online, you're going to have a few different types of weirdos that are either going to criticize your work in a bad way and when i say in a bad way criticism is technically good in general um if it's done correctly it tells you what you've done well and what you can improve on um but there there are some people who will just say your art is not good that's not good criticism they haven't told you what's good and what's not they just say it's not good um, and it kind of works both ways, too. Some people be like, oh my gosh, your art is amazing. But then they don't tell you what about it is amazing, so you can keep doing that in the future. Um, so, 
that kind of, I had a class, not a class. I volunteer for Girl Scouts and there was one segment and it was about art and we went over what good criticism was. Uh, a lot of my friends like art as well. They do different types of artwork. Um, I have a friend who's actually really good at this kind of thing here. Um, she does her, all her stuff in pencil and it is fantastic. Um, I'm getting to the point where I'm going to be like, I wish I could draw like her. Um, it's not, that's not something you really want to say. You can say, oh, well, I, I want to improve stuff that she's doing here, here, and here. And that's fine. Um, but you also want to remember, like, I'm not that person. I need to be me. I need to do things at my own pace. These are the things I want to improve, but I will do that in my own time and practice. Um, does that make sense? I know I'm basically talking to myself right now, so I can't get an answer until later, but that is what is nice about uh, YouTube comments and anywhere else this might be posted, maybe my Facebook page, um, is that you guys can actually give me some feedback and criticism and tell me, uh, tell me what I'm messing up and what you like about this, which is, again, important in criticism. That way I can improve as a person and as an artist. That is, I know I've said this already many, many times in the past almost half hour, is improvement in progress is important. You always want to be better. And that's another thing one of my teachers kind of taught me too, is you always want to make a better version of yourself. You never want to go backwards. Um, and I know like in life, things, something might happen and you might get down. That happens. That's, that's life. It's not fun. It's not easy. No, no one said it was easy. It's How do I exp explain this? But um, through those experiences, whether it be through artwork or whatever else you're doing, you always want to be a better version of yourself. So um, I'm not again. I'm not going to name any names, but on the off chance that the teacher who taught me this in high school sees this, I just want to give a quick thank you. Because without you, I probably would not be where I am right now, uh, at least drawing-wise. Um, you were a big influence on me. I, he's probably not going to see this, to be perfectly honest. But I just wanted to give a little quick shout-out. I um, guess it's not really a shout-out if you're not giving a name. But again, I'm not going to give names of people who don't want to be identified. You know, it's not... You know, some people like to stay anonymous, and that's perfectly okay, especially in art. I know a lot of people will use um, an alias, like, on my on my page, I went by the name Gwen Song, or Gwyneth Song, um, for the longest time, and I think I still do. I think most people still, and I'm okay with that, to be perfectly honest, because that's the name I made for myself there, still call me uh, Gwen um, because they don't want the attention in real life. They want to build up a profile before being judged in real life. There's kind of a disconnect there, but it's... Things like this are difficult for me to explain. Well, everything is difficult for me to explain. Speaking is not the easiest thing for me. So to do something like this is interesting, I guess, but this is another thing about progress that you can take into account. I, like, maybe six or seven years ago, I wouldn't be able to record myself talking and going over how I draw things. Um, in fact, the idea of it would have scared me. And it, <laughs> to be fair, it still kind of does, um, but not to the extent that it used to. Um, 
I would have difficulty just talking to my friends, trying to figure out what to say in conversation, how to continue a conversation, you know, that sort of thing. Um, and I'm not perfect. I'm going to take out the canvas here really quick so I can add the, uh, the whites in here before adding all of the darker black tones in his fur or her. I don't actually know, like, what gender this tiger is, but that's fine. Um, lost my train of thought again. But taking the canvas out, I found that in this program, drawing on the canvas layer doesn't really work well when you're trying to merge them with other layers. Um, just doesn't, doesn't work that way. But, um, where were we? Oh, I was talking about speaking in general. And I feel like a lot of people have difficulties with speech. Um, you know, speaking in front of an audience or, um, you know, if you have to write a paper and speak about that paper in front of a class, that's, that's rough. And I know my, my, my dad used to do the, the, go through the same thing when he was in high school. I think, what did he tell me? I think he said he failed English just because he refused. Like he was fine. He was smart. He's still smart. Um, one of the smartest people I know. And I'm not being biased cause he's my dad. Um, <laughs> he's just, I found that he's really smart and is almost always right. Almost always. No one is ever 100% right, despite what they might tell you. Um, but, uh, he failed English one year because he refused, because he was terrified. He refused to speak in class for a, you know, a written report, you know, had to be spoken in class. And he failed that year and had to retake the class. Um, and you know, I feel like a lot of people go through that, you know, even like, um, you know, some people have a neurological, I don't want to say disorder, but like it, it makes communication in general difficult. Um, I technically have that problem and I'm pretty sure my father had the same problem. Um, I don't want to give advice on how to overcome that just because I technically, it's not really something you can overcome all at once. It's again, it's progress. Um, but doing what you love and kind of forcing yourself to get up there will help. I mean, it's not going to be perfect the first time, you know, nothing is when you first do it. Usually some people just have a natural talent and good for them. I guess. Um, but some people like myself, uh, you know, need that extra push from something they love. Um, and again, using my dad as an example, he wasn't able to go out and speak publicly until, let's see, I think, was he 15, 16, somewhere around that age. He, uh, he joined a band because he loves music. And, uh, You know, at one point, if when you're in a band, you have to get on stage and sing and do your thing. And, you know, the first time he went out, th out there, he was terrified, but he did it because it was something he loved. And I'm not saying you can only do that with things you love, because it, it's kind of impossible. There are points where you're going to have to speak up or present something to an audience. You know, whether you're, uh, in a small group, or, like, let's say you want to be a politician. At some point, you're going to have to get up there and present a speech. Um, you're going to have to speak about something you're passionate about, and, uh, you know, that's not going to be easy at first. You're going to want some practice before that, especially if you're a politician. <laughs> um, and you know, that, that, that kind of thing is not easy. Practice, again, is important with anything that you do. And uh, again, if it's something you love, it'll make it a little bit easier. Nothing about that is easy if you have a fear of speaking, of public speaking. Um, oh, give me a second here. That is a number I do not recognize. I don't know if any of you heard that. It's my phone. 
ringing. <sighs> Didn't think you would interrupt me this often. But, uh, where was I? Let's see, we've got about 23 minutes, according to my timer. Um, I've basically covered everything over here. I thought it would take a lot longer to cover everything. So at this point, I'm kind of just rambling and I feel bad. Um, because again, this is not my, uh, my strong suit, but hopefully, hopefully this has helped a few people. Um, whether it be the tutorial itself or, uh, confidence boosts or advice, I guess. Again, I'm not the best at advice either, but if this helps anyone in any way, that will be, um, that will make me happy. And I do kind of want to not present a question per se. Obviously, you guys can do whatever you want, but um, I want to know if this helps you at all. So if you want to, you don't have to do anything. If you want to comment, let me know what you thought. Um, because again, that will help me in the long run. It'll help me help other people in the long run. Because basically, the only reason I started doing speed paints, and I guess this tutorial too, um, I want to help people learn how to do this. And I've never really been great at explaining it. Again, much like everything else I do, I don't know how to explain things. But I feel in a, a process video like this it makes it a little easier because you can see all of the tools I'm using up here. I haven't used these in a while, but all of the tools I'm using, all of the settings I've got, um, references, layers, everything like that um, for people who want to get this program or even... Let's see, what are the other programs that I know? I know people use uh, Paint Tool Sci. I tried that for a while. I didn't like it as much, but I also wasn't used to it, and I only had like a week trial. That's another important thing that I forgot to put on this list. If you're considering digital art, um, I would recommend finding trials online, because you don't have to pay for those, and then you can figure out what works for you. Most programs will give you a 30-day free trial, and that's a long time um, if if you've got the time, at least, to figure out what works for you in terms of uh, digital programs. Um, so I would recommend doing that before purchasing anything. And again, anything that I'm doing here can easily be done with pencil and paper, too. And I'm saying easily, but I mean, it could be replicated. No, again, nothing's easy. I'll probably do that a lot, saying easy when I don't actually mean it. Um, simple, I guess. Simple and easy are mistaken for the same thing. They are not. But, um, you know, going back into the programs, I forgot. I was, I was going to tell everybody uh, the origin of why I decided to use Coral Painter 12. Um, this is another story back in high school, actually. So, I believe it was, I want to say sophomore year. It might have been junior year. It was one of the two. I, again, was taking an art class. And don't be ashamed to take art classes either, by the way. Because it's better to take the class and learn more than to just kind of be like, eh, I'm fine the way I am. Because, again... You always want to improve, and there's no stopping. There's no limit to what you can do if you continue to try to improve. Um, anyway, back to Coral Painter 12. I, uh, I was browsing through some files on, I think it was, what was it? It was, I mean, it was a school computer. I think it was a Mac, which, um, I don't know if it's obvious, but I'm using a PC. Uh, I'm not gonna fight anyone on which is better. I prefer PCs, but I've used both, and I like both, so there's no actual issue. In my opinion, they both work for me, just because they both work for this. Um, but anyway, <laughs> I digress. I, uh, I was searching through the files to see what would make it easier for me to draw, because I hadn't found 
a good drawing program. I was still kind of sketching, hoping to find something I can do dig digitally, I think. And uh, I found Painter 12. It didn't even have the company name next to it um, until I opened it, at least. And I kind of, you know, I, you know, worked around the tools trying to figure out what worked. And uh, I just liked the feel of it. It was very smooth, which is a weird way to describe a computer program, in my opinion. But that's the only way I know how to explain it. It was a, a smoother, you know, because I had drawn with a mouse before. Um, like I said, that was difficult because shaping everything is harder than using a tablet pen like I'm doing now. But, uh, you know, it was so much different and it was so much smoother and I just, I loved it so much. I, again, this is back in high school. I didn't have a job. I didn't ha really have money. So I, I asked for my father to get me the program for a Christmas. I don't remember what year it was, but I had used the program for over a year by that point. And I knew like this, I know how this works. I would like this program so I can continue doing it at home because I didn't have anything else to use for that. And I got it and I've been using it since then. Um, to preface this, this is not the latest version. So if anybody's looking for this, I think I looked it up because somebody else asked me, um, Lightworks Studio? I don't remember their username. Um, I'll probably put it in an annotation later just so people can see their username. Because they commented on a video before and they asked what program I used, if it was free. Um, it is not free. <laughs> when I uh, when we got this program, I looked it up later because my dad wouldn't tell me what the price was. The sweet man wouldn't you know, didn't want me to worry about money. And uh, I looked it up and it was like around like $300 at the time. And that is a lot when you're first starting out. But he had enough confidence in me. And I know a lot of parents might not support that. Um, the good thing about that is that you can prove them wrong in the future. They might may not believe in you now, but they sure will when they see your artwork later. Um, Anyway, I digress. Um, but I, I looked it up recently, and I found that at certain stores, like there's a Tiger Direct where I live. It's like an appliance store, but they have computer programs there as well. And uh, the program, again, it's outdated. It's been like eight years since it came out almost. Um, I looked it up, and I think they're selling it at some stores starting at $48. That's a lot better than what we paid for it. Um, so if this is a program you like and you think it's worth the investment, um, $48 is not bad. Um, again, depends on your budget. I know if it were myself paying for it when I was that age, I could probably afford it, but then I wouldn't be able to afford anything else. I was basically living on a, not living, I was still with my parents. Still kind of am. And you know what? That's okay, too, because the economy we live in is... It's rough. But I'm working on it. So, again, I digress. Um, I would have been able to pay for that, but not any, like, toys or... Like, because, you, know, you know, when you're young, and I still am, technically, uh, you want to buy merch for the show's that you like, or the, um, the movies you like, stuff like that. I, w if I had the opportunity, I would save for the most part, but if I had the opportunity, I would buy merchandise of my favorite stuff. Uh, mostly stuffed animals, mostly Pokemon. Um, and you know what? That's okay, too. And that's another form of art. Um, you know, merchandising. That's a, it's a good way to support the, uh, the people around you. Now, I'm not saying throw all of your money at these people, because you need to live and buy food and whatnot. But, uh, you know, it's the worst attention you can give somebody is no attention when it comes to art. And, you know, some people aren't going to be ignoring you intentionally. But 
if you if you want to support someone art wise you you pay for their artwork it's it's that simple um and, you know i do a lot of like tutorials and stuff like this for free just because it's that's the easiest way to do it on youtube and you know i'm not i'm not a teacher i'm not going to get paid for something that i'm not a professional at and technically i'm not a professional at art either i consider myself an artist and if you do any type of art um you should be able to have the confidence to say the same um but there's a difference between being a professional who knows their craft and knows how to explain it which I am not, <laughs> and being an artist, because an artist can do this whether they're able to explain it or not, in my humble opinion. Um, but a professional can explain it and teach it, and, you know, they know what they're talking about um, fully without, you know, hesitation, which I have a lot of. <laughs> Um, let's see, where are we at now? Got about 12 minutes before I'm going to put this on hold. Um, I don't remember if I spoke about this or not. The reason why I am doing this, um, in a certain time frame is I don't want to overdo it. And that's another thing I wanted to cover too. Sometimes when you work on artwork, you want to step away for a little while. Whether it's an hour to refresh yourself or even maybe like 10 minutes. It depends on each person, much like everything else. Um, but, you know, some people need a couple days to, uh, to step away from the art. And then when you come back, uh, you can look at it in a whole new light. You also want to zoom out a little bit, look at it from a distance. Now, this is actually a lot better than what I thought this was going to look like. Now, clearly, this isn't even close to done. And we've been at this for almost almost an hour. This is probably going to take... Now, I originally thought maybe three videos. This might take a lot longer, because I'm doing... I'm starting with the face. I mean, duh. You've been watching this. You already know that. Sorry, I state the obvious sometimes, too. But, um... Let's see if we can bring this back up and... Yeah, take out... That for a second. Clear off some of the, uh, the edges here. But yeah, stepping away from your artwork is important sometimes. It helps you, you know, critique your own artwork in a sense. Because you can step back and be like, okay, I know what mistakes I've done here, here, and here. Like, for example, for me, I can see all of the darker lines that I did not mean to put in, or like these little fragments on the side that need to be puffed out a little bit more. Um, and I saw that just from taking out the, the sketch and zooming out a little bit. That doesn't look too bad, for a start at least, um, compared to what I usually do. But, um, you know, step back, take a deep breath, relax, because th that's kind of what this is about, at least for me. I know everybody has their own reasons for their art, and uh, this started off as a stress reliever for me. Um, kind of a, like an escape from reality, which isn't 100% healthy. As a kid, it's fine, makes sense, but as an adult, um, you don't want to escape from life. You want to keep pushing forward. I've had a lot of trouble with that, um, not for any specific reason, um, sometimes people just go through rough spells and it's not by circumstance, sometimes it is, for me it's not, sometimes it's just a matter of I need to figure out what I'm going to do, I haven't gotten there yet, I'm a little stressed, that's what it is for me right now, and you know what, sometimes stress is good, it helps you push forward. Um, I'm just trying to figure out which direction to push forward to. And, again, in school, you know what, people can be rushed trying to figure out what you want to do in life. And sometimes that's a good stress, sometimes it's not. But I've found that there's not entirely a big rush. I mean, you want to go to school, you want to get, um, 
again, you want to move forward and figure out what you want to do in life. But if you don't know what you want to do right away, it's okay. You've got time to figure it out. Um, you know, it's not a life or death situation where you have to figure it out right away or there's no hope for you. There, There's always something you can do. You can go to school and figure out where your strengths are and work to, you know, give, you know, what are the words I'm looking for? I started ranting again without figuring out which direction I was going in. But, um, you know, figure out your strengths, uh, figure out how to make yourself better and not fix the weaknesses because that doesn't sound great, but, um, you know, cover your bases, figure out, okay, I know I'm weak in this area. How can I improve myself so I'm not as, as weak? That's not the proper way to say it either. Um, if I can find the words, I'll, I'll say them at another point, but I, I guess the main, the main thing I'm trying to say is th there's no particular rush. I mean, yeah, you want to figure out what you're doing in life and pursue it, but if you need that little extra time, it's okay. Um, you know, if you don't know what you want to do right away, you can take some classes here and there, figure out what you like, um, you know, it's better to have more experiences and figure out what you want to do and what you love than to just throw yourself in head first into something that you might not appreciate, I guess is what I'm trying to, to say. Again, I'm not an expert. You my advice is not the best for each person and that's i think that's an important thing to figure out too because advice works for some people and then doesn't work for others so you need to figure out what advice is important to you what matters and incorporate it into your well-being because that's another thing you want to stay healthy while you do all this it's I'm trying not to get into heavy subjects. Um, you know, I think that's another thing that needs to be covered too. It's about doing what you love and staying happy. I know there are a lot of people out there, and you know, not everybody's going to be lucky enough to do it too. Even if it's just a hobby, you can you can do it in your free time. Not everybody's going to have their dream job. You can always strive for it. You should never give up your dreams. Um, but sometimes it takes a lot longer than what you're uh, expecting. Um, I guess that can be kind of a heavy subject if you think too hard into it or think a lot into it. There's no thinking too hard about that kind of thing. Excuse me, I need a little bit more water. Here we go. But you never want to stop pursuing what you love. If you end up not having, like, let's say, for instance, art, since that's what we're doing here, um, and it's taking forever to pursue uh, that job, um, don't give up. I mean, you do. Sh you should have some backup plans, and that's okay, um, because you're not necessarily going to get the job you love right away. Um, but it's very, very important to keep trying and pursuing it if you can. Um, again, I was lucky. I had parents that supported me, grandparents that supported me, um, friends who supported me. And you know, not everybody has that, but there's always a motivation that you can find if you look hard enough, to keep going. Um, and it's important, it's impor I know, I've said this over and over already, and I'm sorry if I sound like a broken record. 
That's going to happen a lot, I'm sure. But keep doing what you love. If, I mean, if it's like art or movies, like there's so many different types of art out there. Music is a type of art. Um, if it's something you're passionate about, about and it's something that, you know, contributes to making the world a better place, absolutely keep trying to do it. You know, again, and that goes back to what I was saying closer to the beginning of this. Try to bring some positivity to the lives of other people because it is so easy nowadays to be negative. Um, and I'm sorry this tutorial has been more commentary than actual tutorial of what I'm doing, but you do get to see the progress here. And, you know, I, th I think that's just the main point of any commentary I'm going to have here is to stay positive and work towards something better because nowadays it's, and you know what, in any time period, it's, it can be so easy to get, you know, down in the dumps and negative and, you know, it, it shouldn't be like that, but it is. And we need to help each other grow past any type of negative negativity or depression or, you know, anything like that. It's, it's a tough world. You know, I'm not going to sugarcoat that because there are a lot of things that are tough out there. Um, I'm not going to go into a lot of detail about that, but I know a lot of you have probably had a lot of rough experiences and it's just important to support each other and to keep moving forward because there's so much, even if you don't see it now, there's so much to live for and to work for. Um, yeah, I, I, guess, I guess that's the end of that rant. I'm sorry if I, uh, you know, if I annoyed anybody with my my speech problems, but that's another form of progress, I guess. I, you know, even a year ago, I probably wouldn't have been able to say anything I've just I've just said. Um, let's see. Looks like we've only got a minute left, so let me see if I can add a little bit of darker tones here, just so I can get a general idea where we can start off next time. Um, let's see, let's just start at the top here. But, uh, before we end here, um, let me know again, if you have the time, uh, what you thought in the comments in the video below. I can't speak. <laughs> I've gotten better, but I still can't speak properly. One day. Um, let me know what you thought, what you thought I could improve, what you thought was interesting. Um, if you've got your own stories you want to tell, I'd love to hear them. Um, but yeah, this is part one of many, hopefully. Oh, that is my timer. So technically we are done. I'm going to work maybe a couple more minutes on here. Um, just so we can get a little bit of, uh, placement on the, uh, in the pattern here for his stripes or her stripes um but yeah we're just about done for today and it, let me know what you thought and um obviously i went through pretty much everything here except for uh this little blue box here i'm gonna go ahead and save my progress so i don't lose anything um but yeah, so this is what we've got so far. It's not too shabby compared to what I usually do, what I usually do uh, animal-wise at least. And again, it's okay if it takes a long time. I know a lot of artists might take months to do um, a full thing like this. But um, let me get back to uh, this here. Um, oops. If you want to suggest some topics for me to talk about in the future, um, please do. I don't want to, like, talk in circles like I probably have today. I'm probably going to go back and listen to this and realize how often I've uh, talked in circles and listened to my, uh, personally thought annoying voice, but let's not get negative right now. Um, yeah, just let me know what you thought. 
uh, let me know if there are any topics you'd like me to talk about next time while I do the process for this. And hopefully, um, to my coworker and her son, hopefully this was a nice learning experience. I'm sorry I wasn't really on topic with tigers specifically um, or artwork in general, but hopefully that was, there's the second flub. As far as I haven't flubbed even more than that, but hopefully this was a nice learning experience for part one. Um, but yeah, I think, I think that's it for today. So I will see you guys in the next video. Um, oh, this is really quick. This is the recording software I use for, um, recording all of my videos in case anybody wanted to know. But anyway, I've ranted long enough. Hopefully, hopefully this was a nice little tutorial and I will see you guys, um, in another commentary, hopefully very soon. Bye.